This video is about the Acme EZE Toe Dolly. This one happens to be a 2018 model with the hydraulic disc brakes, the hydraulic surge disc brakes. A couple important things to note about this one is that you want the hitch to be 14 to 16 inches off of the ground. Um, I have a couple complaints about it and I have a couple things that I like. One thing to note is that we are towing a 2007 Honda Odyssey because we have a larger family. And uh, I, I was trying to figure out a way, we were trying to figure out a way that we could transport all our family and our gear and our bikes. And so we use this tow dolly. Um, as you can see here, we have, it's a bit of a mess, but we have five bikes crammed into the back there uh, to make it happen. So this is what we do to load it up. Mikhail, my oldest son, takes off the ramps here. Um, it is pretty easy, you just unspin it take it off and then we hook them up to the back of the tow dolly here uh, we load it in something very important to note when you're doing this is that you want to have these straps right here adjusted so whenever you pull up they're centered on the tire on both sides so something very important to remember when loading the van or any vehicle on these tow dollies is that you're perfectly straight um, I use my right pedal to control the gas, my left pedal to control the brake, and that helps me to get on in a very smooth manner. If the tire is on, up the end of the back off to the end, and then the tire is completely Are they still, are they both hitting the ground? Make sense? Yeah. Okay, because so if they're not hitting completely, then you're going to have trouble. So once you get up, before you take your foot off the brake, Put the parking, put it in park, put the parking brake on, and then start it off. And so what I always do is I get out, I double check. Uh-oh. So that front right tire is not up against the is not up against the uh, stop like it should be. So see that big old gap right there? That doesn't work well. So we need to come back off, make sure that we are on completely straight and go from there. As you see, there's not a lot of clearance between the wheel and the fender. I'm going to pull off and try it again. Double check, that tire is hitting, that tire is hitting, we're good to go. Okay, so the next thing is I lay out all my stuff. Um, it's important to make sure your straps are situated and they're ready. So what happens is I take the straps, I slide them over the tire as best I can, and I get them all laid out. Back up a little bit, let me take that one, so we can see. Oh. You gotta pull off the ramps. So then in the back here, if you can on the back side, okay. You can see where I hook them in. One hook goes on this little D-ring. The other hook goes over here. Make sure that when your hooks are on, you have the strap straight. So in the back, this strap, you gotta make sure it's running down the center. From here, you just feed it between the little slot. And then I always pull it tight. The straps need to be basically at 12 o'clock, uh, 1 o'clock, and like 2.30. And before I even tighten this, I'm going to pull it a couple times with my hands. Because if you don't get it tight with your hands first, then you're going to run out of strap room. And so it pays dividends to do it tight. Something I've heard from somebody else is that if you don't make sure that your straps are on the back side of your tire nice and tight, then it will, uh, uh, it can pinch your tire. So I'm gonna get my tire in, in there nice and tight. And then I'm gonna start cinching it down. So you need a big wrench. This is a one and one eighth inch wrench. Hold the strap down when you're tightening it up. And get it nice and snug. Right, so I got this one decently snug. We'll go around the repeat on the other side. Okay, so on this side we're going to do the same thing. On the driver's side it's 12, 12 o'clock and like 1 o'clock, but obviously this is on the other side, the left side, so we're going to have to go a little bit different. So it's going to be like 9.30, 11, 
11 and 12. So I'm gonna these in. Another common problem that happens that has happened is sometimes when I don't put this on straight, it hooks onto the bottom part of this when I'm tightening it, and then it'll slide up when I'm driving. So make sure the hook is on the top part of the D-ring here. So again, I'm gonna slide this through. Pull it tight and then work it down with my hands until I can get it nice and snug on both sides. So while I'm tightening this up, let's talk about the van and the dolly. The van weighs in at 4,600 pounds. The dolly weighs in at 350, so it puts me at 4,950. Plus the bikes that I have in there, I'm probably at 5,000, maybe a couple pounds over, which is a lot. That's a max tow capacity on most of these RVs. It's 5,000 pounds. Um, so one thing I noticed is for the last thousand miles or so, I tracked our gas mileage, which is a whopping 6.9 miles per gallon. We have a 32 foot, 33 foot RV uh, with a Titan V10. And we came from Nevada through Idaho and into Wyoming. So there was some elevation change. So we got 6.9 miles per gallon towing, 7.2 not towing, going about 65 miles an hour, 60, 65 miles an hour. Um, I, I don't try to charge up the hills. Some of the hills we go up maybe 20, 25 miles an hour. But then again, we're going up a 10% grade, towing 5,000 pounds. Once we're on the way, it's really easy to, to tow. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lock the ramps down on both sides, and then we're gonna drive for five or 10 minutes, turning back and forth, and then these straps will loosen, and then we'll retighten it. Something really important to make sure that you do when you're towing a vehicle is, every vehicle is different, but make sure that your steering column is unlocked. For the Honda Odyssey, the 2007, all you do is you just turn the key on, turn the key off, don't pull the key out, and the steering wheel will remain unlocked, allowing the tires to turn when you turn. Again, like I told you, I showed the video earlier, is when we turn, especially on concrete, when we make a 90 degree turn, the front tires and the van turn, but these tires just roll over and they're being dragged across the concrete. Something I really do not like about this Acme tow dolly. A lot of the tow dollies, they have pans here that allow the wheels to turn more easily, or even the tires themselves turn. The reason I picked this Acme tow dolly is because once it's not loaded, you can set it upright. We have limited space at our home, so being able to set it up right is a huge benefit to us. The other reason is it's light. It comes in at 350 pounds. We're already towing 4,600 pounds. I need something as light as possible so we don't go over the max tow capacity of our, of our vehicle. All right, so then yeah, let's come back to these straps. We have them down pretty, pretty tight. I'm gonna come back and make sure that they're, they're hooked appropriately there. And then on this side, you have all this excess strap and so what you do is you feed it up through the bottom of this loop right here, and then you wrap it around. Um, and I just put a little half hitch on there on both sides, and it's fine. Um, the first time I didn't, I didn't. First time I did this, I didn't have all this excess strap, and I thought I had it tight, but I realized that my straps were actually hanging up on each other here, and I, that's the, the reason I didn't have it, a ton of excess space. So I'll show you here, putting up this great it's actually really sharp so you want to watch your fingers it would be a, it'd be a good idea to wear gloves when you do this uh, so I'm not being as safe as I probably should uh, once you get it locked in on the back okay, you can just slide the first one down I'll get the second one over here the second one goes in upside down. Yeah, it's really cold out right now. It's probably 32 degrees. And so it actually hurts your hands quite a bit more not wearing gloves. All right, so lock the second one in, drop it on, spin this down. I need to put a little more grease in this so it spins down easier and then just cinch it down and you're okay. Okay, so one other essential piece of equipment is a yoga mat, or any mat for that matter. Because inevitably, 
whatever you have to lie down on is going to be dirty or whatever. Just three. So you have these two chains. Um, I never knew one was longer than the other. Anyway, what has to happen is you have to hook this chain around a structural component of the vehicle and then attach it to this slot here in the trailer. And that's your, that's your fail safe. So if your straps come off or you don't tighten them down well, your vehicle backs off, these chains are gonna grab it. So if you wanna film from under here, under here. I'll crawl under here and I'll show you. Look, so I can even see here that this strap is loose. So I know, I stay on that side. I know that when I drive forward, it's gonna get loose. So I crawl under here. This is the worst part of the whole thing. I hook this around the uh, lower control arm and then I just slide this chain through one link to make sure it catches, drop it down on the hook and then it will be, be tight, uh, tight enough. You don't want to have it tight because what happens when you turn, the vehicle will roll back and forth and if you have it tight, it will cause damage. So you want to have some play in it. So I'll crawl back out and do that and the same thing on the other side. Get my chain, yoga mat. Ooh, it slides under. My fingers are freezing. It's so cold. Oh, I'm like Alabama boy. Moved to Georgia to Arizona to California where it's never this cold. So I'm not used to having to deal with these cold temperatures and the northerners out there are going to be laughing at me saying oh it's only 32 degrees i think that's pretty darn cold all right so these two chains are kind of worn out from being dragged i guess so i'm gonna pull it through the third one make sure i'm tight grab a hold of this inner strap here realize okay it's a little bit loose so when we get going i'm gonna have to ugh. Make sure I check that and tighten that down again. All right, so the last but not least is to put on a second set of uh, brake lights. So if you come around here, Mikhail, on the back side, when my buddy was following us when we were camping together, he said, I can't see your brake lights at all. He couldn't see the RV brake lights, he couldn't see the trailer brake lights. And so if you put, I, know, I found out if we put our mirror, mirrors in, you can see the trailer brake lights. The, I mean the, the RV brake lights. The trailer brake lights are really hard to see. So what we do is Harbor Freight sells these little magnetic brake lights, which we just put on top of the van. It has a little uh, plastic sticker there to keep it from scratching the van. Although on our van, it doesn't make that much of a difference because it's already beat up. So I just set them up here so it's easy to see. Then I run the power cord up the center of the vehicle and I put it under our windshield wiper. It's important to make sure you get it under the windshield wiper because if you don't, it's going to start flapping all over creation. And then if you look at this cord here, that happened to us, came disconnected, went under the trailer, it got all eaten up, and now I, I need to go buy Harbor Freight again and buy another cord so I can, so I can fix this. So then, uh, I like to run both the trailer lights and the accessory lights. And so what I did is I got my, I have a couple of these at home. This is a six pin adapter that changes into four flat. Actually, this changes to four and five flat. So I plug the trailer into one. I plug the overhead lights into the other so I can run them both at the same time. Um, and then put it in. Like I said, this one did just recently come a tide they didn't strap it down securely so they're a little bit out of out of around here and it makes it hard to get it in oh my hands are cold actually i think it's colder than 32 degrees out it's kind of cool because there's snow and ice everywhere this morning come on baby all right there we go got it in and voila so now I'll go hop over the RV. Oh, actually, getting ahead of myself. The other important thing to do is to make sure you take off your e-brake. Because if you don't take off your e-brake, 
you're gonna start driving along and and then you're gonna have your brakes locked up and just a huge mess here. So I have the keys on and I shut my windows, turn the key off. Oh look at there's an elk over there. And uh just leave the key in there. You wanna show him the elk in the picture? You run over there real quick and show it to him. Don't get too close to him. Okay. There's a big one over there. These guys get huge. Hey buddy. So the Boy Scout rule of thumb is to make sure that if you stick out your thumb, you can completely cover the animal. So you don't disturb them. All right, the race back to the RV. This is at the uh, campsite that we just left between Yellowstone and Grand Teton. So you can see the snow covering the mountains. All right, something else that I love, the kids are getting buckled up here, is the ability to see the van behind us when we drive. So I always look at it, I turn a couple times just to make sure everything seems right. And I always check in my rear view mirror because when you turn, you can actually see in the mirror, you can see the front wheel of the vehicle turning with you as well, as long as you turn sharp enough to get the whole thing in the in the mirror. So I'll turn over here. You can see the front turn front wheel of the minivan. I'll stop here. Kind of angling towards us. Right? Boom. And you can see if you look at the tire right there, I'm not even turning that sharp right now. Let me turn a little bit sharper. Ugh. You can see the whole thing's like leaning over. Oops. Alright, let me see if I can zoom in anymore. That's about as far as I can go. But you see that tire house? I'm just doing maybe a, a half of a 90 degree turn, 45 degree turn here, and it's already buckling over. But when I do a sharp turn, for example, I'll show you right now, uh, coming up to this stop where it stops on right here, we have to turn left. This is a regular two lane highway. And I, oh, actually, we got to turn right here. Get myself lost. So we're going to turn right here. I'm going to pull up super wide just so I don't have to worry about the tires and the trailer rolling over. But we'll come up here. Uh, this is to the main road leading into Yellowstone. Actually, this is the second, no, this is not the main road, but it's just a big road leading in towards Yellowstone. And we're gonna turn left. Uh, I don't see any cars. So let me get this zoomed in here. Let's see if I can do this and drive. And so watch that tire. This is, this, keep in mind, I'm making a really wide turn. I'm, I'm already over the second line here. But you can see it folding over and just dragging. And you can see, actually, if you look carefully, you can see a black line behind it. Now I'm going to straighten up a little bit. And it's just dragging that tire, grating it across the, the concrete. And the reason I realized that is I can hear it coming off of the video here. Uh, the tire just so... <laughs> When returning, which is very disconcerting to me, but it seems to work. We've towed a couple thousand miles with this, and it hasn't had problems as of yet. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you, and if you found it informative or helpful or interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Till next time, see you later.